This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So when we go through and look at provisions, we know that we recognise a provision if there is a probable outflow of economic benefit and we can measure it reliably. OK, so all as a result of some form of past event, isn't it? So we're just going to go through on these two illustrations that follow and have a look at the measurement aspect because this is where the examiner has a little bit of license to try and catch you out yes because when we're looking at the measurement we want to measure it at the best estimate so there's a little bit of judgment required but that feeds into audit we're not worried about audit we're, we're focusing about how do we measure that best estimate and what we've got are two illustrations that highlight it quite well with regards to looking at a best estimate from a single obligation so by that we mean there is just one outcome okay so there is one court case and we're either going to lose it or we're going to win it if we lose it there's going to be a provision okay we need to provide for the losses However, we then need to compare that to whereby we have a large population. So there isn't just one possible outcome. There are numerous possible scenarios that could arise. And we need to work out a best estimate, if you like, as an average over all of those possible scenarios. And we'll see that in a bit more detail shortly. So let's have a look, first of all, at the single obligation. So I think I said uh, with regards to a, a law case, uh, we either win it or we lose it here. Uh, very similar. OK, so what we've got, it says there's been an explosion of an oil rig in the North Sea, uh, lots of environmental damage. And we were taken to court by the local authority who were looking to recover the costs of the cleanup operation. Uh, the company has been informed by their lawyers that it is probable that they will be liable for the costs of the cleanup operation. So probable, greater than 50% chance, more likely than not, that we're going to have to pay for the cleanup. The past event is the, oil, the explosion of the oil rig and, and the leak of the oil. So we need to be able to measure the provision at our best estimate. There's a single obligation. There's a court case. We're going to lose it. Okay, There's no other scenarios that are going to happen. Now, this is where you need to be a little bit careful because when we look at it as a single obligation, we look at the most likely possible outcome. OK, because what you've got there is if we look at the amount that are going to be settled or, or at least could be settled, you see that the most likely outcome is here. There's a 45 percent chance of it being the 40 million dollars so as that is the most likely outcome that is what we will provide for we will make a provision there for 40 million dollars credit provision debit the statement of profit or loss now you might just be thinking well hang on chris 45 percent is less than 50 percent but that's not looking at the outcome of the court case this is looking at the outcome of the the settlement of the court case yeah, the outcome of the court case itself is that we're going to lose. It's probable that we're going to lose. So there's a greater than 50 percent chance. So we make the provision. We, we've got the provision that we know we need to create, but it's about measuring that provision. So it doesn't matter if it's a less than 50 percent likelihood. It just needs to be the most possible likelihood. OK, uh, the most likely outcome. So here we will make a provision for 40 million dollars. Happy? Sure. Because now what we'll do is we'll look at it as a large population. This is where you then make the mistakes, not in this example here, but within the previous example. Because what you're going to do here, it says a company sells second hand cars with a six month warranty that promises to repair the cars if any faults occur following the sale. So. There's a large population of cars that we have sold, each one with a warranty. We need to make a warranty provision because let's face it, some of those cars are going to break down. OK, 
It's the way of the world, isn't it? The past experience dictated that those cars have broken down and will have needed some form of repairs. There'll be some cars that won't have broken down, so won't need repairs. So again, it's a matter of judgment. But the key thing is here is that it's probable that there will be some repairs carried out in some way, shape or form. But we have a large population of cars under warranty to consider, don't we? OK, and this is where we need to be careful, because what we're told is that 80 percent sold in the last six months will require no repairs. 15% uh, will require minor and 5% will require major repairs. And we're going to use those percentages to work out the best estimate. We're going to use, if you like, a weighted average, okay, an average cost of repairs. So what we're told in the next paragraph is that the company has estimated that if all the cars, so 100% of the cars were to have minor repairs, this would cost 100,000. And we know that 15% will require minor repairs. So 15% of the 100,000 is what we should be making a provision for. Uh, if all the cars were to have major repairs, that would cost 500,000. But they're not all going to have major repairs. Only 5% of them will. So we should make a provision for 5% of the 500,000. Clearly, the 80% that have no repairs will not need any provision at all because 80% of nearly is zero, isn't it? So what we're going to do there is if you do an expected value, average, whatever you so wish to call it, couldn't care less, expected value to be technically correct. Uh, if you plug the numbers into your calculator, we make a provision, is it there, for $40,000 being 80% of nil. I don't know why I put that in there, but just in case. 15% uh, of 100 is that there as 15,000, and then the remaining 25,000 comes from the 5% of the 500,000 major repairs. Okay. That's fine. But the reason why you then make a mistake is because you've got that in your head. You've got this whole right best estimate expected value. And you don't, within an exam question, identify in the previous scenario where it is a single obligation. And what you go through and see students doing is go, right, we need to make a best estimate of the outcome of this court case. And what students will go through and do is they will work out an expected value. No, 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 no. When you have a single obligation, you go with the most likely outcome. So here, that's the $40 million. Don't start taking 20% of 25 million plus 45% of 40 million plus 35% of 65 million and work out an expected value because that is not going to arise, is it? It is going to be one of those three outcomes. So we go with the most likely. Okay. And that's where people will make the mistake. So within exam questions, whether it's a published company accounts question, whether it's a multiple choice question, you've really got to think about your best estimate and think about whether it is for a single obligation, which is likely to be a court case, or whether you have a large population, which is likely to be around a warranty provision. Okay, there you go. Excellent. Work them through again. Check that you're OK with it. Work an example that there may be within your study text of your chosen tuition provider. And just promise me you won't make the mistake in the exam.